Hi, my name is Julianne Koss, and I'm going to show you in the next few minutes my top six features in Photoshop CS6. We'll start here with Camera Raw. You'll notice that the basic panel has been completely redone. It is now so easy to set my black point, set my white point, adjust my highlights as well as my shadows so that we can really see detail in there. We can zoom in scoot over and I can remove any chromatic aberration that I might get from a wide angle lens. And we can go to my tone curve. I have more control than ever now. I actually have it per channel. So I can come in here and do some color correction, like maybe warming this up a little bit. It also enables me to do much more creative color adjustments. So for example, we can take out all of the color out of the saturation area, return back to my point curve, and maybe do a little cross-process effect where I've got some blues in the shadow, but some yellow in my highlights. I can even combine that with other channels like red or green in order to make that a little bit more purple down there and still keep that yellow up at the top. So tons of great things that you can do now in Adobe Camera Raw. Let's go ahead and move over to Photoshop. How many of you have ever had to deal with a lot of text in a Photoshop document? Wouldn't it be really nice to be able to just select your type tool and then use new paragraph styles and character styles in order to format all of that type? So here now it's as easy as just clicking on the styles that I created. I've got different um, categories here for notes. We can scoot down. You can see here if I want to change this to a category. And in fact, if I double click on this, we can look at this. I've got all your basic and advanced character formats that you can include in your paragraph style. We have the open type features, indents and spacing. That includes all of your justification as well as alignment. We've got the every line composer. We've also got justification and hyphenation options in here. So it's now so easy to simply move through the document. And if we've got a title there and move down and there's a description, keep on moving back and forth between a title and a description. You can see that doing this across multiple documents, maybe if you're laying out a web page or something, this just becomes really, really simple and fast. And it makes your work consistent, obviously, across documents. Now, those are all paragraph. I can also change character styles. So just by selecting this type right here, we move over character styles. We can apply those. Obviously, we can come up here and apply this as many times as we want to. And of course, we can override that as well. If we don't like that red, we can change that to blue. You can see that I can hide that. And you'll also notice that it tells me that there has been a change that I can either update and actually make a new paragraph style from, or I can go ahead and just cancel that. So lots of flexibility here. You can import and export your styles. In addition, we've made a ton of changes to our vector shape layers. I can drag out a custom shape. I can go ahead and fill that shape with either a solid color, with a gradient, or with a pattern. I can choose a color from my image area here. And you'll notice that it keeps track of my recently used colors. If I move over here and add a stroke, I might want to add a solid color stroke. Let's make it really bright so that we can see it. We can change the, the width of that stroke. And we can also come in here and make custom dashed or dotted lines in that stroke. You'll see there's more options here so that I can go ahead and change the dash and the gap as well as the alignment, the caps, and the corners. Of course, if we don't like that, we can just set that stroke to none. You can easily transform your shape layers. If I wanted to make a cutout, that's as easy as selecting another shape tool and then changing what it is that I want to create. So for example, we could subtract from a shape and I could punch a hole right in there. Or if I wanted to make additional shapes, I would just select new layer. We can go back to our custom shape. We'll drag out one here. Command J will copy it. We can move that over. And you can see now that I have three shape layers. If I want to merge any of these together, we can use Command E. And it will actually merge all of those shapes without rasterizing them. If I want to grab my path selection tool and just select one of these shapes, I can now quickly jump that shape to its own layer so that I can put different attributes on that shape. So tons of improvements there. 
All right, let's move to the next image. Let's talk about blurring an image. Obviously, we've got a lot of distracting elements on the left and right hand side of this image. So let's go in and we will add a tilt shift blur here. You can see that we can rotate this in order to get it to be vertical. Scoot it over right on top of that flower. We can change the width of these to determine exactly what areas I want to have blurred, and then I can change how much blur I want. So I'll just pull this in a little bit, and then to make this a little bit more realistic, let's go ahead and add a little bit of a light bokeh effect. You can see the sparkles that are starting over here. Now I probably want to blur that a little bit more, so now we can back off on that. We can really customize this to get it the exact way that we want it. Tap return or enter in order to apply that, and we can see a quick before and after. See how we just removed all of those distracting elements to really focus in on the one flower. And there's much more more than just that. There's these two other types of blurs as well. We've got field blur and iris blur. Let's go ahead and start with field blur. I want to make sure that the rabbit stays sharp, so I'm going to eliminate the blur there, but then I'm going to set down multiple pins all the way around the rabbit, and here I can adjust each one of these individually in order to get just the amount of blur I want exactly where I want it. In fact, for those of you who want more information, you can tap the M key. That will actually show you the mask, and then you can pull these further apart or closer together in order to get that mask to only affect the areas that you want it to, so that, for example, the little nose here of the bunny isn't blurred. Again, we tap the return key in order to apply that, and you can see there before and after. So it is so easy to get a selective blur on the image and really draw the viewer's eye into exactly the area that you want them to be looking at. Okay, the fifth feature is, is really a quick one, but I think it's very cool. I'll tap the C key for the crop tool. You'll notice now that I can go ahead and crop my image and move my image within the crop area. I can quickly crop actually outside the area if I want to add some transparency. And if I've forgotten to set the aspect ratio before I come in here, you'll notice that I don't have to back out of the crop tool anymore. I can simply set that aspect ratio while I'm in here and then readjust. I've got the nice rule of thirds and other views that I can choose from. And of course, I probably don't want to delete these crop pixels just in case I might want to come back to them later. One other thing that's kind of associated with that, Command or Control T to go into free transform. You'll notice now that I don't have to change the algorithm that I'm using. When I sample up versus sample down, I can select it right here, or I can just have Photoshop do it for me by choosing automatic. That way, it will use the correct algorithm whether I'm resampling up or down. And in fact, that's even a preference here in general to go ahead and set that for your image interpolation. And finally, let's just take a quick look at video. You'll notice here that I've got three layers. Let's show my timeline. These three layers are going to be stacked by default, one on top of each other. That's not what I want. I want them to play in a sequence. So I'll just select those three layers. We'll use the new video group from clips option. And now let's zoom out so that we can see that indeed these three video clips are sequenced now. Of course, I can change the sequence by simply dragging and dropping the clips. I can change the endpoints and I get a nice preview there. Once I change the endpoint or the outpoint, of a clip, you can see that Photoshop automatically will just scoot those over so there's no gaps in between them. I can also click and change the duration or the speed of the clip. I can change my volume and other options for my audio. I can even mute this audio that I recorded with this clip so that I could add a nice audio overlay to the whole series of clips that I'm using. And of course, I can use any of the features in Photoshop to make creative effects or to do color correction, for example. So if I've got this last clip targeted in my layers panel, you will notice that if I add maybe a color balance correction layer, and I just move this a little towards cyan and blue, you can see that it's automatically clipped that for me. I don't have to worry about it. That is the only clip that this adjustment layer is going to change. Of course, if I didn't want that, we could move above the clip. I could add another adjustment layer. Again, to make something really obvious, let's just add a black and white adjustment layer, and let's go ahead and shorten it. Maybe I only want it over this section of the clips, but it's over two different clips. Well, it's very abrupt the way I have it right now. I'd really like some help making some fades and some transitions. That's what this icon is right here. So we can fade that in, and we can fade it out. 
In addition, I can make a crossfade between two clips. So again, so it's no longer a straight cut anymore. Now there's a nice transition from clip to clip. I can also fade in from black at the beginning and fade out to black at the end. So let's see what that looks like. We're going to fade in. We'll see the first video. It'll crossfade to the next one. We go into the black and white adjustment layer, fade into the last video clip, and then fade out. I've got one more item here. This is a layer that you can see is hidden. Let's go ahead and make that visible. This happens to be a smart object, so let's put our time insertion cursor right above that. And what I want to do is I want to change the transformation properties of that. How cool is that? That I can go to the beginning of the clip, set a keyframe so that it appears maybe in this location and maybe at this size, and then move forward in time, change the size of that just slightly so that it's moving, and Photoshop automatically adds the second keyframe. So now I've got a nice pan here. Of course, if I want to do this on a bunch of images, you'll notice that on my stills, I also have the ability to just use these presets. Really, really easy way to make maybe a Ken Burns effect on your images. Well, unfortunately, I can only have six top features right now, so those are the top six features for Photoshop CS6. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll check it out.